growing up uh, and they're not being able to go to the they can go in and, and take part in the community activities we've got to set the daylight hours according to the the, the, the lay of the land lucian i appreciate your call very much but your blinkered loyalty to your farmer uncle is bewildering this is six six <laughs> You're listening to BBC Six Music, I'm Russell Brand. That was Was Not Was without Coming Freaks. Before that was uh, Johannesburg by Gil Scott Aaron. I like that um, the revolution will not be televised by Gil Scott Aaron, which he talks about, you know, or if there was a revolution, it will not be brought to you live on radio, it won't be sponsored by. He talks about, like, the nature of a revolution, what a revolution would actually be like, and that like, the revolution will not be televised. I always used to think, you know, yeah, I like this, and I'm, I'm up for the idea of a revolution. Are you, Carl? Um, not really worried about it. Right, if you don't think too, you don't think deeply enough. I'd like a revolution, but if it was gonna, if there was gonna be a revolution, and I weren't gonna be right at its core, manoeuvring it at its heart, mm. I would want it to be on the telly, just to, you know, so, well, how, how's it going? Yeah. Yeah. You know, you'd, you'd want to be involved with it, wouldn't but you? But it would get on the telly. I mean, there's loads of channels now, aren't they? There yeah, is, yeah. They couldn't ignore it, could they? Like yeah, a story like this, there's a revolution. Put it on. Yeah, yeah put, put it on. Like, yeah. For how much coverage can you give to like sporting events or like you know makeover shows? Would, would, you, do, would you pay? Would, would that be a pay per view for you? Would you would you bother? Or? Yeah, I'd invest in watching a revolution. I suppose what yeah, Gil Scott yeah. Aaron was saying is that when the revolution comes, it won't be part of corporate consumer culture. We will have overthrown things like television. I suppose that's the central message. But even then, wouldn't you set up a more radical television network that would cover the revolution, bring it to people, and encourage them? I reckon Che Guevara, Fidel Castro, the Cuban revolutionaries, if they'd had access to telly, they would have gone, well, yeah, put the revolution on. It's going to encourage people, you know. But, uh, cause mass communication, right, as I'm about to demonstrate by reading out this text message from Rory, is vital in a revolutionary movement, or even if you're in a revolutionary movement, even if you just want to have a bit of a chat, right? R Rory goes, um, like he's happy that we played that De Depeche Mode tune because he didn't know the title before, and it was appropriate, right? Um, because, because he was on a bus coming from Stansted, right? It was Enjoy the Silence. Stan was, he was on a bus coming from Stansted from a plane in which nobody like bothered speaking even though the plane was going funny by which I assume means there was turbulence or it looked like you know that the, the plane was in jeopardy for a while and instead of putting on the fast and the seatbelt signs they put on a no smoking sign instead well if ever there was a situation where you'd want a cigarette it's when you plummet into your doom mm. on, on, on an aeroplane and it said the, the, uh, the stewardess didn't know how to turn on the lights for landing so I had to land in darkness after that and then he says something's a bit sexist, or oh, the stewardess didn't know how to turn the lights on, then he apologises in case that is sexist, so fair enough, he's been a little bit sexist and immediately apologised for it, so I think that's fair enough. Uh, and then he asks why are you lot all getting radio shows at Christmas, but we're not you lot, are we? There's only two people in this room, but we can help him with the, the, the plane thing. Yeah, that must have been really frightening. Have you ever... I've suffered turbulence once, so that was all really turbulent, all the dinner flew everywhere, and I did think, oh, no, this is it then, this is going to be my terrible death, it's going to be on this plane looking at these faces. But, you know, as it turned out, it was it's all all right, just got a bit of dinner on me. I, I don't like it, I don't like flying. Why? I just I just think it's a bit weird, isn't it? Right, it's I up, but I don't... I always have that thing of... We shouldn't be up here. Yeah, but we are on radio now, so, you know, sort of technology immediately subverts, like, the natural state. We weren't meant to walk on our own legs, were we, Carl? What do you want to do? Sort of dwell in caves, never going anywhere, staring at your own ghoulies. Mm. Sounds like a good night, in. Sounds yeah. like, yeah. I mean, it's not too different from your actual life, is it? Yeah. So you've got a remote control in your hand and access to the internet. But do you know, like, I tell you what I always, like, I'm fascinated by on planes and that, right? Do yeah. you know, like, when somebody's ill? Yeah, I do know that. There's always a doctor on the plane. Okay, is there a doctor on the plane? Yes, there is, here, over here. And there always is. I don't know, where are you getting that knowledge from, though, Carl? You're getting it from films. No, no, just because I've been on a couple of long flights, and that's when it always happens, the old people, the, the legs start clotting up or whatever. <laughs> and <laughs> the they old go, legs clotted? And they go, oh, is there a doctor on? And there always is. They never go, oh, there isn't one on, what are we going to do? There's always one. I and don't yet, reckon that No, you honestly, would. there is. And the point is... You know, us, you know, nurses and doctors always say they never get en enough holidays. Yeah. Yeah, whenever somebody's ill, they're always, they're always on the thing. Yeah, if the toilet's bunged up and they ask for a plumber, right. yeah, never one about. Never one about, but then they can just drop the whoopsie directly onto the ground below, can't they? They should never need a plumber, just a stick. Good point. Fair enough. <laughs> mm. 
lottery winners on acid Crimea there. Uh, I really like, I got into that. I quite liked it. It's sort of quite upbeat. It's took me away a little bit, but I can't help but think about, like, as soon as anyone says lottery winners, I have to think about, is it Mike Carroll or whatever that is always referred to as Lotto Lout, Mike Carroll, whatever he's called, that proper, like, he's, I, well, I, I like him, because I like it that sort of, he's just built himself a sort of a moat of vulgarity with his wealth, right, he does, like, all that stock car racing like, on, his gra- on his grounds of his mansion, and all his, like, neighbours are, oh, God, this was such a lovely neighbourhood, that he just, he burns tyres and that, he's just all <laughs> reckless living his life with all the band of his sovereigns, and, like, when he had to go to court to be given an asbo, he just, uh, like, he turned up drinking beer, like, in the court, well, you can't do that, you know, you're in court, and you're, well, I'm rich, I should drink beer wherever I choose, I like it, I like the decadence of it, I'm into him, do you like him? Uh, he's alright. Yeah, all right, yeah, I'm, I'm really pro him as a person. You see, I, I wouldn't want that much money, I don't think. Why? Uh, just money brings you hassle, doesn't it, with money? No, because imagine if you've got absolutely, I think what money does is it provides you with some sort of buffer zone, protects you from the world, right? Because like, like if you've got, like, if you're really rich, you don't even have to look at gas bills, you don't even know that there are problems in the world. If you've got a bit of money, oh, it's alright, you can stay in hotels, you can get cabs everywhere. If you've got no money, you're just on the street. No, no, yeah, I, I didn't say I didn't want any, right? I wouldn't be sat here pressing these buttons for you and that, would I? If I didn't want any, I could have stayed at home. Right, okay, but so that's what's true, you're here for money, I thought that there was at least some vocational love. Yeah, well, it's just, it's just right. like Christmas is expensive, isn't it? And, you know. So you're like a radio mercenary, aren't you? No, but do you- You're like a radio A team. Don't, don't you know what I mean, though? Like, right? face having, if you're any of them. having money in that, yeah. it's like, you've got loads of money, so suddenly you've got to spend it, so you've got to find things to do. Like, travelling around the world and that. If I won the lottery, I wouldn't tell my girlfriend. What, you just have a secret stash of millions? Well, like, I, do, I just- because she'd start saying, oh, let's go to India and all that, and I'd be like, I don't want to go to India. Why don't you want to go to India? I just don't want you to have injections in there. <laughs> if you need an injection, you shouldn't be going there. <laughs> but I think that you're going to have to start embracing life a little bit more. Well, I did. I, I had a facial last week. Because yeah, fair enough. You know, I've seen about it, though, didn't you? Mm-hmm. We've got a nice text message here, surprised by the quality of music on your show, always had you down for a shandy drinker that would hang out with menswear in Camden. I do live near Camden, I've never met menswear though. Keep up the good work, that's from Paul, thank you Paul for that endorsement. Although, uh, I can't drink shandy because I'm a recovering alcoholic and drug addict, so even, even a shandy could push me over the edge. Really? Yeah, even a shandy, that'd be, t- like, that these Paul is saying, you know, shandy drinking would, like, is an effeminate thing to do, that for me, that'd be, that'd be butch, that'd be like a desperate band drink for me now, a shandy. Although, you know, sort of in the day, I did sort of pour tequila into my eyes. Got a bit down again, aren't I? What? I sort of brought it all down a bit. Put the energy, talking about alcoholism. Yeah, well, I'm three years clean, I've had a nice Christmas, everything's all jolly. Um, if you want to send us a text message, what's the number for text messages? Uh, 64046. Nice, send us a text yeah. message. Uh, email russell, russell.sixmusic at bbc.co.uk. So send us either of those. You so can so telephone yeah. if you want. And Rory, he's like Rory, who's just had that um, like near-death expre- experience up in the skies, he's still on the bus, apparently, he's continuing with his nightmare on there. I once know someone who, on a bus, committed an act of onanism, that means manual self-pleasuring, on a bus. Of all the places to do that, you know, I, I mean, perhaps this isn't a topic we should dwell on in any d- degree of detail, but Rory, I'm glad you're listening to us on Six Music, because there are worse ways to entertain yourself on a bus journey. <laughs> this is BBC Six Music, you're listening to Russell Brand. That was Suede, Stay Together. Suede have like reformed now, ain't they, as uh, the tears. Like, it's like Brett and Bernard uh, got back together as a band. But like, like if you go to any of their gigs, right, and like sort of as the tears, you say, oh, this is quite good. I'm feeling quite nostalgic about the past. You might feel like they refuse to like revisit any of their Suede back catalogue. So if you go and see the tears and something, sort of oh, oh, I remember the days. Or oh, play, play Animal Nitrate. So, what? I beg your pardon? We are the tears. I think it's suede you're thinking of. No, 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 we'll all, we'll play beautiful ones, beautiful ones. That'd really take me back. Well, I remember when I met my girlfriend. Beautiful ones, that was the anthem of the day. 
I do apologise. We, as the tears, will certainly not be playing any of that mumbo jumbo. They've divorced themselves. I reckon what that now is they'll probably have another argument as the tears, right? They'll fall out again, and then sort of like they'll reform and call themselves like you know, one last try or something like that, or failed marriage, or locked together out of mutual need, right? Then they won't do any more of the tears songs. They've got to break this cycle at some point, haven't they? That was Forest Fire by Lloyd Cole and the Commotions. That was a, a, a live session that was recorded for Richard Skinner, right, on uh, Radio 1, 5th of July, 1984. It's one of them session things. That's good. Um, so, yeah, we're in that Christmas purgatory week, aren't we? Like, oh, what day is it? I don't know. Today's, well, it's actually, well, it's coming up to a Wednesday now, but it's also meaningless, isn't it? Christmas Eve, Boxing Day. What is the actual day? Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, right? So we've been, just, like, sort of talking about Christmas and analysing Christmas, trying to ground ourselves, trying to find some facts. Carl just told me, you know that, uh, thing, like, sort of in, in the First World War, 1914 to 1918, or whenever it was, like, there was that, famously, that football match between the English and the Germans in no man's land on Christmas Day. Didn't it's happen. one of those beautiful things. Go on. No, it, apparently it didn't happen. I thought it did. I thought it did. We all, as a, as a, as a nation, as a continent, I think, believe that there was that football match between the English and the Germans, Christmas Day, oh, the guns fell silent, and, and it's a beautiful, poignant football match that showed, oh, even though there's this war on, we're not so different, and it shows the futility and senselessness of war, but you're saying that, how do you, why do you think that did not happen, Carl? Um, well, a little bit of me says, you know, they're going into battle, who decided to take a football with them? Right, <laughs> yeah, okay. So there's, there's that. Is that is that sort of thing that's niggling me a bit? Because you'd be carrying a lot of stuff, a lot of rifles, you know, I've got football you know, checklist, sort of right. Yeah, got the bullets, got the grenades. Hang on a minute, he's got the football. Yeah, you know, I just can't. Yeah, case there's a case there's a Christmas kickabout as well. Oh, have you bought some fudge fingers? Have you bought some butter brandy? Yeah, brandy but you, would, you wouldn't bring a football, yeah. would you? You wouldn't assume that there's going to be a Christmas Day tryst. I mean, we'll, we'll chuck it out there, you know, on the text. Uh, so, yeah, so you can send a text these days. Yeah, send so. us a text if you know for a fact that's true. Were you there? 64046. Yeah, yeah send yeah, us that, because I'd like to know. Because yeah. like, that's an, if that is an apocryphal tale, right? Apocryphal meaning something reputedly true, but actually just like nonsense. No. Like, yeah, right, for an example of an apocryphal tale, Carl, is, um, you know, George Washi Washington, the first uh, president of the United States, apparently, like, you know, they say that he chopped down uh, a cherry tree, right, on his father's grounds, and uh, his father said, George, did you chop down that cherry tree? And he went, Father, I cannot tell a lie. Yes, I did. His father was so impressed by this display of honesty that he just went, oh, well, don't worry about the cherry tree then. Son, you're a, you're a very good lad. Right? So that's an, apo an example of an apocryphal well, could, could he have, could he have blamed someone else? Was anyone else around when he well, took the tree down? So, no, no, because this is an example, right, of not about, like, you know, sort of, it weren't like he was up against it. It's not like George Washington's dad had him in a sort of a prime suspect scenario where if George Washington didn't come clean, he was going to get caught anyway. He's about... George Washington's integrity and morality, so that's why that tale has come about, because it demonstrates, oh, George Washington, what a good man, because it ain't actually true, it never even happened, right, it's just to demonstrate that he was an honest and decent man, and it illustrates the idea of, sort of like, you know, sort of like, say you and I, like, on our way home tonight, we nick some equipment from this studio, like that, that computer, that, the, the, that computer yeah. screen thing, if we nick that, right, but we probably won't nick it, And but the reason that we're not nicking stuff from here, probably is it because of fear of consequences or is it because oh no it's wrong to steal from six music it's a good radio station it's an authentic you know music based oh, let's not nick none of their stuff or is it because we think there'll be consequences carl what do you think what what you're asking me why i'm asking you what i've already reason? got a laptop i've got a laptop at home. all right then the stapler why aren't you going to nick the st are you going to nick do you know what i can't remember the last time i used one of them i've oh. never i don't need one <laughs> i've never i haven't used <laughs> them for ages do you know when I was on jury duty, right? Yeah, jury yeah, duty month. recently. I, mean, I can't talk about it and stuff, because you're not allowed. No, now you think you're some justice master. Well, well you know, I've got... Like a superhero yeah. that has an, underst an innate understanding well, of right and done it, and maybe one day you'll be the chosen one. You were randomly yeah. chosen for mm. that jury duty. They say that, though, so people sort of don't feel bad if they don't get picked, but I reckon they've gone, let's get Pilkington in. No, I don't think so, because like, like, I remember reading, because I like, remember reading stories about that case while it was ongoing, and it said things like, Eleven members of the jury got on with their jobs dispensing justice, whereas the twelfth member 
was causing a lot of uh, aggravation and uh, that was I thought that's Carl Pilkington the, the upsetting the rules of justice. Judge, the main judge was loving it. He sort of said, "You've done a great job there." What to you yeah. specifically? Well, to, to all of us, but he was looking at, at looking at me no. when he said it and stuff. I reckon. But, but no, anyway, listen, I'm not allowed to talk about it. You keep right. going on about it. 